How do there guys and welcome back to Redka TV where today we're going to do something on something that doesn't exist. I've gave you a lot of rules based videos and we're going through a big series at the moment of insightful videos. If you are enjoying those hit the subscribe button. But today I'm doing a video on things that don't exist. The unwritten rules of darts. The things that you may think are so common that they are in the rule book but it tends to be just good etiquette. Now, if you do break these, I expect that you're not gonna be getting a sanction as such or a fine or a suspension. But what you might do is you might land yourself in a bit of hot water with your opponent and you could have an effect of reputation, certainly with the player that you are playing. Number one, stand behind your opponent when your opponent is throwing. Now there is no rule about where you can stand once you retrieve your darts. You can stand at the side of your opponent, you can even probably stand in front of them as long as you don't encroach on that exclusion zone. However, it is good etiquette and an unwritten rule within darts that once you retrieve your darts, you go and stand behind your opponent. The reason for that is to cause no distraction. No movements that you make are gonna be picked up by the player or their eye line. All the player wants to see when they are throwing at the board is the dartboard itself, the marker, the referee. That's it. Most people, once they take the darts out from that point, you'll be head down and back behind their opponent. Number two, retrieve your darts and try not to cause any obstruction or disruption to your opponent's rhythm and pace. This is two players playing their own game, but against each other. Now, what you don't want to be doing is doing things that can sort of knock your opponent out of that rhythm. Now, there are no time, no time, in terms of how long your visit to the board is. So you can throw your darts, you can approach the hockey, you can collect your darts at whatever speed you want. However, it is kind of an unwritten rule that once your last dart is out and you've thrown that third dart, you go straight down the hockey, collect your darts and exit. Now, it doesn't impact the speed of the throw, everyone's different speeds. But as soon as that third dart is gone, what tends to happen is your opponent will start approaching the hockey and they'll be ready to throw at the point you cut collected your darts and retrieved your darts. What you don't want to do is throw the third dart, walk around a bit, go to the hockey, or just dawdle really slow down the hockey. That is an unwritten rule, but will cause a little bit of friction between you and your opponent. Number three, do not remove the darts until you are happy the score has been called correctly. Now, this borderlines across a rule, like some of these will. Once the score has been called you can't challenge the score if the darts are no longer in the board if the darts are in the board you can step back you can say can you have a look at that they'll come over check it oh you are right it was this score now if the score has been called as 100 and marked as 80 that's different so that's something you can change so don't try don't get two rules sort of crossed over with this one it really is once they're no longer in the board you can't then say well actually that was 100 mate if you've not got the evidence of that anymore so make sure that the referee is correct in the call that they make before you remove the darts from the board reactions distractions this goes for not only you as a player but it goes for you if you're watching somebody you don't want someone reacting to each individual darts or even in the best will where they're sort of like cheering or wanting you to do well, that sort of interaction tends to happen in between throws and between players, not really much at all. Remember an incident a few years ago when Peter Wright went to go in Price at the World Championship and wanted to give him a fist bump in between sets. That was because Gerwin Price said to Peter Wright, you ain't going to win a set today. Peter Wright went over, gave him fist bump, says, oh look, I've got a set. Gerwin Price did not like that. He likes the banter off the stage. He hated it being on the stage. Now there is no rule that would have prevented Peter Wright from interacting verbally with Gerwin Price. But again, like I said, these are more etiquette related things and he took homage to Peter Wright's approach. Final one, and this one is something you see all the time. You see it so much that you probably don't even realise it happens now. A handshake. Every game begins and ends with a handshake. Now there is no rules. If you want to start a match and you don't want to shake your opponent's hand, you can go and start and play. It's absolutely fine. 
no rules against that whatsoever. However, it is a sign of respect and endearment for your opponent both before and after the game. So every single game of darts begins and ends with a handshake. Now, this obviously brings up different debate. Let me know in the comment section down below which way round you do this. Personally, when I win a match, I was always told to shake the hand of my opponent first. As soon as you've won the match, the first thing they should see is your hand. You shake their hand. They can go do what you want. You can celebrate and do whatever you do. Then go retrieve the darts. Some people will retrieve the darts first, then come and shake their opponent's hand. What do you do? Let me know down in the comment section below. On your way down there as well, please do hit the subscribe button. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, I will catch you again for some more Edgar TV, where there's going to be lots more insightful content coming over the next month or so. Catch you soon, guys. Edgar TV.